here's a story. This version of it comes from the London Observer newspaper, but um, it's about an American. And so, therefore, it's okay to talk about it. Did I piss the Brits off? Yeah. Here it is. A family counselor turned author has caused outrage by claiming in his latest book that if women want to stop their partners from straying, it is their responsibility to stop them. Gary Newman, an American psychotherapist who has been featured on Oprah Winfrey's TV show, and in Time Magazine, has angered feminists by listing changes in behavior that women should make in order to keep their companions faithful. The tips, which Newman says are, quote, dedicated to helping wives, include always forgiving him, mm-hmm, Giving him sex on demand. That's a good one. Lavishing praise on him for providing for the family, even if earning more than him. Good idea. Rarely letting him out on his own with friends or work colleagues. <laughs> I don't think I'd go that far. And taking an interest in his hobbies. Right, so do you have that list? Let me give it to you again so you don't forget. Always forgiving the husband. Giving the husband sex on demand. Lavishing praise on the husband for providing for the family, even if the woman earns more. Rarely letting the husband out on his own with friends or work colleagues and taking an interest in the husband's hobbies. It says here not all women appreciate Newman's advice. Is it a joke book? Asked Dorothy Ramsey, chairwoman of the Association for Family Therapy. You could try this approach, I suppose. It depends whether you see marriage as so worthwhile that it's worth sacrificing one human being to sustain it. <laughs> well, don't, don't, don't get so excited there, darling. I don't think marriage is worthwhile at all. But there you go. She says, this country, meaning the United Kingdom, has moved on from that stance. It's okay if you expect one half of the couple to live in misery because they're constantly twisting themselves into contortions to serve their partner's needs. Listen, if you do not want to serve my needs, you do not need to marry me. You know what? I'll continue living alone. Simple as that. In the world where I'm always right, in the world where I do uh, good things, tasteful things, fun things, in the world where having flat screen TVs in the living room is okay, in the world where drinking too many beers is all right, in the world where smoking weed is not going to be critiqued or criticized, I'll just keep living in that world. Jeez. Says here the author, that's Gary Newman, whose book, The Truth About Cheating, Why Men Stray and What You Can Do to Prevent It, is published this week, insisted that he was just helping to offer women a helping hand. He said, my work is dedicated to helping wives to learn and change in ways that will significantly benefit both them and their husbands. By the way, you remember, we did not need a book. I gave you, ladies, eight words to save your marriage. Remember the eight words? Stay thin, long hair, sex anytime, shut up. I think you could save half the marriages right there with those eight words. I do. Says here, Newman surveyed 25,500 faithful and unfaithful men 
before drawing his conclusions, he found that 69% of those who cheated had never previously considered it a possibility, while almost 90% linked their cheating to, quote, some significant dissatisfaction in their marriage. Newman added, if a husband has already cheated, his wife's role is to recognize that she needs to change. And that's because we don't want to be married. When you get right down to it, we don't want to be married. We get married because you force us to, you expect us to, because we're pussies and we give in to it. But the reality is we don't want to be married. And this is our way of passively, aggressively acting out. Cheating. I did it, so I know. I mean, I finally had to come to the realization that I just did not want to be married. And I was tired of people telling me that I needed to be married. Newman said, men will eventually find their way into the arms of another if they are not getting enough sex at home. Sex for men is the equivalent of the loving comment and thoughtful gesture for the woman. In short, when you give what your husband wants, he'll give a great deal back to you. Susan Quillian, a relationship psychologist and author, said, this is an appalling book. It's more like dog training a man than being in an honest, successful adult relationship with him. Oh, really? I'm wondering if now that you know what this book is about, if you think, if you think that it's an appalling book, you tell me. 1-800-5800-TOWN. 1-800-5800-866. Like it. You're like a godfather to me. Every word you say, I, I just do it. The Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likey Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. We are talking about a book by one Gary Newman. The book is called The Truth About Cheating, Why Men Stray and What You Can Do to Prevent It. In the book, Dr. Newman, a psychotherapist, says that, um, well, quite simply... Um, you have to give your husband what he wants. You have to give him what he wants, which isn't all that different from what your professor has been telling you. Bottom line. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Not much. Hey, I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener. Um, I'm going to have to say I agree with those points. I mean, at the end of the day, in a relationship, um, you know, guys, want anything that their woman will give them and more. Well, the fact is, I just believe that women stop trying to please their man the minute they uh, they get the man to marry them. And that's where they go wrong. That's why men cheat. Absolutely. And I can say I'm not married, but, you know, you can say the same for just any relationship. Um, once the guy stops getting what he wants, then uh, he will go elsewhere. And I'll be and the that, first one to admit I've done that. I'm the second one. Actually, I think I was the first one to admit it, but hey. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, if, and by the way, uh, women stop looking sexy. They gain weight. They chop their hair off. They start saying no all the time. And really, you guys were thinking about getting married, and you think you've got the only one who's different. You're going to find out the hard way. That's Ryan, right. I, I've rendered you speechless, so I'm going to move on, but I thank you. Lisa, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, A Lisa. random listener, um, first-time caller. I, this subject is just, it's just a sore subject with me. I can't disagree with this Dr. Newman. I can't agree with him enough. Because, or just, I can't, yeah, I can't agree with him enough. Um, I just... I just got out of a divorce. I just divorced my husband. Um, I've been with him for three years. I am considered hot by both female and, and male, both. Um, 
I'm 40 years old. Um, I probably look like I'm maybe in my 30s, early 30s. Um, I have a fantastic body. I'm like 120, but I did everything my husband wanted me to do. I'm even a great cook. Um, I would <clears throat> entertain his friends by, you know, let them come over, drink, do whatever they want, serve great meals, um, do whatever they wanted in bed, look hot, long hair, just, you know, I've, I think I'm the total package. <clears throat> and, just just what this subject is about, I know that, you know, perhaps there are some men out there who aren't getting what they want from their women, but I I totally disagree with that. I think that a woman should do what she can to, to you know, uh, make herself look really beautiful for her husband and do all those things. But um, apparently I was with a pig. Um, he was a professional by trade, and mm-hmm. I just I think that I totally disagree. I did all the above, and he was just a pig. He's on the internet. Yeah, but uh, look, look, look. Just because you might be the exception to the rule, doesn't mean the rule isn't correct. Well, well, th- well. That, what I'm saying is, I just disagree because women can be out there looking hot for their husbands, um, going along, doing, taking up golf with them, um, doing all the things they want them to do. Let them well, go. Well, if Vegas men are just naturally cheaters, why marry one? Yeah, well, you're right about that. You got me there because yeah, the, there was red flags there, and I probably should have noticed that. But you know, they they promise you, and they're sorry, and yeah, probably so. I I would. Uh, I, would I mean, let's face that. it. Let's face it. For the most part. Even if a guy is the one who comes up with the idea to get married, it's because he thinks that's what you want, and he thinks that's how he's going to keep you off the market. I mean, guys don't want to be married. You're absolutely right. You're right about that. That's exactly so, what he admitted to, too. Of course. So, so the reality is, guys don't want to be married. We don't want to be in that kind of relationship. Some do, yes, but generally speaking, um, if we could do it without being married, we would. Okay, but still, Tom, you're saying that there are just some men out there that are just going to cheat. Okay, and I did agree with that. But And then men don't want to get married, and he married me just to keep me. Okay, so he did that. But he still had it all. So I, you know, I guess what you're saying, that he's just going to cheat anyway. So he didn't have it all. He was married. Right. Okay. Having it all means you can have whatever you want, which includes if another woman comes along once in a while, you can have her uh, like we have them before we get married. Let me give you an example. Again, you may have given it to him any time, any way he wanted it, anywhere. All right, fine. But most women don't. All right. So let's review. You're with a woman, and you only see her on the nights she feels that she looks great, smells great, tastes great, and on the nights that she wants to have sex. Okay. And a lot of guys don't realize this. A lot of guys just think, oh, she was busy this night, or that night she had to be with her friends or whatever. But the reality is that when you're dating, women only see you on the nights they want to have sex. Okay. okay. So when you, when you get married, you now find out the reason you were only having sex once or twice or three times a week is not because she didn't have time or because the two of you couldn't get your schedules coordinated. It's because that's all she ever wanted. So now the man thinks, oh, we're getting together and I'm going to be getting it six ways from Sunday. Then he finds out he's at best getting what he was getting before. The reality is, though, that he was getting more than that before because he was dating other women to fill in the gaps. She may have been having sex three times a week. He was having it seven times a week. Okay, so now but he, God, you take you take a, a hot body over freaking phone sex. It doesn't make any sense to me, you know. Because because here's here's the part that women can't understand. Okay. Yeah, you tell see, me. There, there, is, okay. there is no emotion involved in sex for men. Ejaculation is like urination. It's the same thing for a man. It is a need we have. You need a drink of water. Uh, you need to go to the bathroom. Uh, uh, you need to change the oil in your car. I mean, it's just a need we have. And so whether it's phone sex or looking at a photo or looking at a video or whatever, we're going to get that need met. Okay. So what you're basically saying then is if a, a woman, meet, a hot woman meets a hot man, there's a good chance in that uh, after marriage uh, the, the relationship is going to go sour anyway because he, he just wants uh, quantity versus quality. Well, no, no, and but he wants he wants the quality when he wants it, any time he wants it, anywhere he wants it. Because that's what he was getting before he was with you. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> well, that's bad. I still, you know, this doesn't make any sense now because I'm at a point now where I don't want to do have any sex with anybody. So I just don't want the same thing. But I've heard that women are emotional when they do have sex. I just don't want to be out there doing it and being done, you know, just getting it done. And don't get me wrong, I love sex. I just love to do, you know, every man I thought was hot. But, you know, but I just, don't get I, yourself I most, my body. Well, no matter what men tell you. Now, I'm speaking as a man. Okay. So I'm not I'm not defending men. I'm just telling you how it is. No matter what a man tells you, he's really starting to feel something for you. He thinks he's falling in love with you. He is in love with you. He loves you. The reality is he has this physical need, and he's going to get it met. Oh, my God. And if you say no on a given night, he's going to feel entitled to go get it elsewhere. That includes the night you're tired or you've got the flu or you don't feel like it or you had a bad day at work or whatever reason you have. you got to remember, back when you were dating him, if you had a bad day at work, you'd say, why don't we just get together tomorrow? And he was fine with that. Right. And you, and you were fine with him being fine with that. What he didn't tell you and what you didn't know is after you hung up the phone and put, took the hot water bottle and put it on your stomach and laid back down to watch TV and read Cosmo, whatever you were doing, he was calling the next number on the list. No, you're right. Oh, my God. You're so right. You're always you right. And you didn't know that because what's he going to do, tell you? <laughs> yeah. He, he's, he's got to keep up this charade that there's some kind of emotional attachment. I know. So God. you you want to believe that he's sitting home watching the ball game or that he's with his buddies or something. But the I know, reality I is... Though, Tom, it's just that it's, it's not true, though. I mean, we, we give it up. We do what we're supposed to do. You're saying a psychologist wrote this book. I just yes. disagree with it. Though. That's all I'm saying. I mean, No, I know you yeah. disagree with it, but you have to understand, even if you were giving it up anywhere, anytime, it's and I was. can't... Nobody does that, by the way. <laughs> I just, I mean, you know, I just think it's about pleasing your man. As long as I'm going to be pleased too, and you know, he works for it. If, you know, he buys me nice things. He does nice things. I, you know, have a great lifestyle. It's, it's you know, why? Well, most not? women forget though is he gave you the ultimate gift. He signed a contract. That was not an ultimate gift. I, you that, know, I gave him the gift. gift for marrying me. No, but, and the sad but, thing is, he just didn't keep that up. So no, he didn't give me an ultimate. When it was gift, all that, over, when it was all over, did you get any money in the bargain? Any any goods and services? Oh yeah, I I did, I did, and and but you and see, I that's didn't my get point. Because he was willing to give it to me, gave it to me because you know it would have been disaster. He was doing his freaking patience. So married or single, it just it, in my back. But you yard, see, but you see, that. there was the gift at the end. You had insurance. Yeah, yeah. With a lot of threats, yes. Well, because, Tom, it wasn't that long of a marriage either. It was less than two years, but I got a nice sum out of him because of that. But and I also left a very nice life. So, you know, it was really sad because what I had, you know, what I gave up was just, a, you know, it's just a big slap in the face to me now. So, you know, I, you know. Well, you wait a minute. Think about learn. it. Think about it. So wait, girl, now, now, now you, wait, 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 wait. Now, now more is coming out about your story. So you married later. Wait, was it your first marriage? No, no. I lost my first husband to cancer. So. Okay. So you, you were married, uh, what, what, you were in your 30s when you got married the second time? Yes. Yes. And you married a well-to-do guy? Yes. yes. And I see you're calling from Newport Beach, so it was Orange County. Yes. And he was a doctor of some kind? No, I mean, that was my second one. My third, this, this last one was, is, yeah, the doctor. Okay, and so uh, the guy, clearly, he lives in Orange County, he's a doctor, and before he met you, he could have sex with anybody and everybody, and he was. Oh, he was, oh yeah. So yeah. by marrying you, yes, he was giving you a gift, because he could have continued having sex with anybody and everybody, but he signed a contract, which resulted in you getting cash. No, he begged me to marry him, Tom. I didn't say, like, hey, dude, marry me. I never I said that. He's but like he begged you to like... marry him. He begged you to marry him because, as he admitted to you, yes. that's what he thought you would want. Well, yeah, you're probably right. And you did. You know, it yeah. Is what you I, well, want. I didn't. Let's just say I, I did, but I, I thought it was a little soon, and he really talked me into it. He pretty much just said, "Okay, we're doing it. We're doing it this day," and so I, I just did. I shouldn't have, but I did. You know, so I was talked into it. You, but you were talked into it because he had cashola. He was a doctor. No, it wasn't a cash thing at all. You know, uh, I probably right, like so I said, I worked, gave up. 
if he worked, if he worked, if he worked at a new apartment building uh, in Irvine, holding the sign that says "Now Renting" and an arrow pointing at the building, uh, and, <laughs> and, and would you have jumped into marriage with him? <laughs> would, I, would I have? Yes, if he was holding the sign that said, "If you lived here, you'd be home by now," uh, would, <laughs> would would you have jumped into marriage with that guy? No. No, no you did it because not. he was a doctor. No. You did it because he had cash, and that's why you would somebody, the signs. No, it was somebody a lot better and bigger than that. So that's what I'm saying. I left something bigger and better than that. Wait, you left so somebody for him? Wait, 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 wait. Now it's getting more interesting. <laughs> you left somebody else for him. Yeah. And th so you met the you met him before you left the somebody else. Yeah, well, I had actually known him before, and I just gave him a second chance. Is what happened, you know. But you were with back. you were, but you were with somebody else. Yes, yes. So let's review. You bolted on somebody else to be with him, and oh then instant karma slapped you in the face. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I, did, you know, I try to do it the nice way, prompt comments, but it just, yeah, you're right, karma. I hate to admit to that, but it's like, oh god. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, well, maybe not. I, yeah, I mean, it, it looks, it looks to me like the guy had more in common with you than you think. Oh, stop! That is not true. That oh, is yeah, so is. not true. <laughs> you, you, you don't even believe it yourself when you say it's not true. Listen to you. No, 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 no. Because a person like this, just you know, there's not a lot of people. At least how was I, how was what he that. did worse? What you did to the previous guy? I'm so, well, no, the, the previous guy, you know, sometimes, Tom, you talk about a women, soul figures and want money out of people and stuff like that. I, I was the opposite. It was, like, too much for me. It was like, okay, well, I don't want certainly, to be bought. But you certainly took the cash payment when it was over. Oh, on this, this, that third one, you well, had to. I mean, you know, he you owed to. it to me for crying out loud. Hang on a second. Let me get Dave on here. Dave, what did you want to say to Lisa? Well, let me tell you, you know, I've been listening to her, and it's just it's just funnier than hell for the simple mm -hmm. reason that, I mean, you stop and think for a minute, you know, when uh, he asked you to marry you, he didn't know any better, obviously. And uh, women are kind of like cars, the way I see it. I mean, it's great to have that nice classic car sitting in the garage and everything, but wouldn't it be nice to go out and test drive a Corvette once in a while? You know, I mean, that's the same thing with being married. I mean, you're married. Yeah. You're, you're doing the same thing over and over and over. And granted, you're giving them, you know, six ways from Sunday. But, you know, six ways from Sunday can be kind of boring with the same person all the time. You know, so it would be great to, uh, you know, go out and, uh, um, you know, drive that Corvette every once in a while, see what else is out there. And then, you know, so you got that, you know, reliable old classic sitting in the garage. But going out, you know, checking out a nice sparkly new model. Well, you know, it's it's easy to say that. I mean, if you really just uh, you know just want to be out for fun and games, and and yeah, some people do. But if you're going to marry someone, you know, the commitment, and if she's given yeah. what you what you want, you know, I'm just saying that well, you know, there's it, no it, reason it, it, she's keeping herself. You know, there's no weight coming on. Her body looks great. She's, you know, Miss Socialite. She's doing all the stuff that she's supposed to be doing, on top of letting you go on your boys' trips. On top of that, you know, give me a break. There's not a lot of women who would do that. So what I'm yeah, saying, but, you know, man is, the is not designed says, to be a monogamous creature. You know, man is not designed that way. I mean, that's just well, yeah, the way it is. It's just history of time. So, <laughs> you know, it. all you need to do is go out and find yourself some play toys, you know, find yourself a little F-buddy every once in a while, and have a good time and don't worry about it because all these bros out there, you know, that are there saying, oh, I got the golden, you know, hooch and all this other stuff, you know, that's just not out there. Trust me. I'm 49 years old. I got four kids, and I've been married for 22 years, and I tell you what, it gets boring after a while. Trust me. <laughs> and I teach my kids. I've been teaching my kids, you know, the same thing Tom's been saying, you know, since they've been old enough, you know, before I even started listening to Tom like it. You know, you know and it's just like I found, I found this guy on the radio. You might start looking at younger chicks and, you know, really getting excited about that. But, you know. In a, in a very new relationship, I just think it's absurd, and, and I just think that he's just a pig. He's just Looking a pig. At the size of my I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave, thank you. Let me get one more in here if I can. Let me say hi to Ryan. Ryan, uh, what did you want to say to Lisa? Oh, let me try, try this one. She can't Hello? shut her yak long enough to hear what's going on. Oh, boy. Tell her. 
I mean, you, you've talked nonstop, but you're not hearing what Tom's saying. What it comes okay. down to is every man needs strange. Okay. That's it. Bottom line. Say yeah, well, I, I, did, I got that. I totally got that now because, I, I, yeah, he's been tested without even knowing about it. And uh, I realized that it's not, it's, it's about just getting it however he could get it and <laughs> it's pretty scary, you know, it really is. So Well, I'm maybe he's got bad selection criteria, about. but the bottom line is every man is looking for, every man is as faithful as his options is the bottom line. Okay, well, yeah, I learned my lesson, Tom. <laughs> I and I, and by the way, there, what there, he says is true. Let, let, let me give you the nuts and bolts of what Ryan is saying, because I, I have used that expression on this program many, many, many times. Uh, that a man is only as faithful as his options. Let's face it, the guy holding the sign that says now renting outside the apartment building, uh-huh. that guy doesn't have any options. He doesn't have uh, secret cell phones, secret post office boxes. Uh, he doesn't have the ability to travel. He can't afford a hotel room for a night. That guy is going to be a lot more faithful. Hello? Did you hear Hello? what I said? Did you hear what I said? Hello? Uh, I, I guess not. Uh, I love that. Listen. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what was going on with that. I have no idea. Lisa, can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, I think I, I got cut off. Well, I'm um, here now. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. I'm sorry. All right. I, just, uh, I, I will repeat what I just said. Yeah, You're still not hearing me. All right. We'll try to fix that problem when we get off the air. In the meantime, Ryan and Lisa, thank you so much for the calls. Appreciate it. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Like it. I, for one, believe they ought to have personal ads of the auto trader. Not a bad idea. You know, there are women out there who could advertise themselves as a 97 BMW. Not a bad idea. Yes. You know, 86 Mercedes. It's a language. You know, those real housewives of Orange County. You know, those are like 89 Mercedes with the hoop jobs and stuff. You know, I mean, they they had they, they were a comfy ride for somebody back around 1989, 88, something like that. The Tom Likey Show. It's Tom Likey one 800 800 tom Thank you for showing again. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. We are talking about a book by one Gary Newman. The book is called The Truth About Cheating, Why Men Stray, and What You Can Do to Prevent It. And um, something says that um, wives are to blame if men cheat. And you know what? To a certain extent, he's right. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Candy of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Candy. How are you today? Doing great. Awesome. Thank you so much for putting me on. Well, as I asked Dean, my question is, why? okay, we know the reasons why, you know, men get it wherever they can, you know, whenever they can. The scientific reasons why, and well, that's the difference between men and women, as you said. Now, I understand that, and I just want to know, as a 21-year-old who's currently in a relationship, yes, I know, I have a boyfriend, that's horrible. We're both constant listeners to you, so we both know better. But anyways, how do I, how am I able to grasp that and be able to live happily? Because I admit, I mean, I get kind of mad when my boyfriend looks at porn on the computer. You know what I mean? I I don't know. How do you how do you understand that information and just be happy with yourself? Do you cook for your boyfriend? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel when he eats other food? I really don't care that much. Cause Why not? I didn't have to cook it. <laughs> mm. And you know what? When he looks at porn on the computer, you didn't have to be there turning him on. That's true. He had needs, and for whatever reason, you were not fulfilling them. Maybe it's because you were sleeping. Maybe you were sick. Maybe you were at work. Maybe you were busy. See, now, I'm going to have to, I might have to beg to differ. I might be wrong, though. He is, I guess, like any 22-year-old male. He wants it, you know, constantly every second of the day. So am am I weird for thinking that, or that's just normal? 
that that men want it every second of the day when they're 22? Yeah. <laughs> no, that well, that is normal. And again, if if that's too much for you, you shouldn't be stuck in a relationship. That's true. See, one of the benefits of not being in a relationship, even for women, there are benefits to it. Now, let me give you an example. Just as I told you, when a guy is unattached, he can get it three times a day if he wants it. Three different women every day. Mm -hmm. You have the option of saying no. Right. Because you can say, well, you know, let's get together tomorrow. I don't feel good today. Or, you know, let's get together on Saturday. You can do that. Right. Right. Now, he's going to be getting it other places in the meantime. But let's face it, if you've got different sex drives, why should he suppress his to satisfy you? That's true. Because we all have our own needs. We do. Okay, so um, trying to look at this logically, if I'm not willing to give it every day, then I shouldn't be surprised if he goes and gets it fulfilled, whether it be on the computer or even physically. You know, I'm not ruling out that right. option because they are, they are animals. We all are animals. Now, okay, and about the cheating thing in regards to the book. Now, I haven't, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go buy this book and personally read it because I'm interested to know. I've often, you know, heard that it's scientifically for men it's okay to, it's okay to, uh, okay to cheat because, you know, they have that need. But for women, we do it on emotional basis. So therefore, it's not okay. It, you know, the, you know what I mean? It's not okay if we cheat as well because we do it because we're emotional. Men do it because they have a need. Now, would you agree with that? What's your opinion on that? Well, if you're not in a relationship, it's not cheating. Mm -hmm. Say if you want. It's only cheating because you, you insist on having a relationship. Okay. Well, that makes sense, then. I mean, uh, it isn't cheating if you live alone and you have no commitments. And say if it's the opposite, though. Say if you if you do happen to live with somebody. See, yeah, then I know you're against living with each other. But say you do happen to live with each other and you do have a commitment. I do not see the benefit of it for anybody. True. I mean, if you can't afford your apartment, that might be a benefit. But other than that, I don't see why you need to live with a person. What's the point of it? Everybody has different reasons. But truthfully, I mean, being a 22-year-old person... I don't think there really is. I can see where you're coming from in that because, you know, it's the prime of your life, you know. <laughs> well, I'm, it's going to be the prime of your life until you're about 30. But for Well, here's, the, the, here's the other thing. We, you know, our life expectancy has gone up. The average woman dies now at 81. Average man, 77. You're 21. Right. You really need 60 years of togetherness? I can understand, yeah. A lot can happen in 60 years, and what are you going to miss out if you're with somebody? A lot huh? will happen in 60 years. How much of that time will you waste being hooked up to somebody, tethered to somebody, who doesn't completely satisfy you? Or you don't completely satisfy them? Yeah, that would be considered a big waste. You are right. So then and why do it? Well... I see. This is where we're all entitled our own bias. I just, I'm, I'm pro marriage, so. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, but again, that. see, see, yeah, a lot of people are pro marriage without asking themselves why. Well, my current answer at 21 years of age is I'm pro marriage, but I really don't know the reasons why, and I will probably find out the reasons why later. I mean, look, there are there might be a good reason. A good reason would be you can get money if things don't work out. As a woman, that's a good reason to get married. See, that's where I'm, and I have to say I'm an exception to the rules because I, you know, for being my age, I have a very decent job in sales. Well, you're saying that now, but the minute you find him having sex with your best friend or having sex when you're not looking, uh, you'll want money. Right. That's true. <laughs> every every girl does. They feel they have that compens they need that compensation for what well, they, they can't have. imagine the guy they're with ever having sex with someone else, but when they do, you'll want money. So there's a benefit. Right. But really think about what that sounds like. <laughs> I want to get married because if things don't work out, I want money. But that's that's what it really is. Yeah. That's true. And another thing, let me ask you this. Because um, lady that just called, you know, she sounded like a very nice lady, pretty hot and all, but 
you're not really at the prime of your life when you're in your 30s. I mean, come on. I know, I know you have a preference for the younger ones, and I know you can strongly agree with me. Physically, you're at your prime when you're 20. So how do you feel when you have all these, you know, older ladies? Granted, they're, you know, they're your listeners, wonderful. We're happy you have them. But how do you feel when they call in saying, I'm the full package and I'm 30 years old? Well, as you see, you're hearing the reasons why I want nothing to do with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm the total package. That's why I'm, uh, I, it's like having a used car that says I'm the total package. You know, yeah, it's my third marriage. I'm the total package. Well, you know, for me, the total package just drove off the showroom floor. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and me stepping into the bar at 21, trust me, I have a lot of the, I guess you could say, experienced lookers always looking my way. So That's I'm, right. <laughs> well, Tom, it is a pleasure. I just wanted your opinions on that. Um, my boyfriend and I are constant listeners. We love you so much, and I agree with a lot of everything, like, pretty much almost everything you say. Even though I'm a woman, I don't want to admit it, I do. And you're the best. That's Take okay. me out with a bong toke and a thank you, Jesus. All right, here we go. Thank you, Jesus! 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. It's Chad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing okay. Good deal, good deal. Hey, listen, there's a point I wanted to make, uh, actually a couple of them, but uh, it was funny, when I was in a relationship, uh, my partner, my, my girlfriend, would always say, I just want a guy who's honest. I just want a guy who tells the truth. I'm tired of all the little lies and things like that. I just want a guy who's honest. But when things like this come out, you know, where it's see, guys don't talk in code. We say what we want. Women will say one thing that mean another. Guys, it's like this is what it is. And when something like this, an article comes out, and the honesty, so to speak, just smacks him in the face, they can't handle it. They, it's it's got to be somebody else's fault. No, it can't possibly be my fault. It can't be. It, what couldn't be the, possibly be the reason? me why my husband cheated it has to be him and it's it's like it again women say they want honesty but in actuality they can't handle it when it's handed to them and i'm saying if there's any women listening to this show right now if i as a guy were to profess that i know more about women than women do they would think i would, that's the most ridiculous preposterous thing to say but in a lot of cases especially on this one women will call in and profess to know more about men than men do and I think it's just, it's a ridiculous standard. And maybe, you know what, in some cases they're right. Maybe the man they have that they brag about was, you know, maybe they were lucky enough to get a, a, a domesticated house cat as opposed to a lion, uh, a pussy, if you will, who won't fight back. Maybe they're lucky enough to get one of those. But most guys are, are lions. Uh, uh, you know, monogamy is a, is a cultural rule, not necessarily a natural rule. Uh, not all societies and communities practice monogamy. You know, it's more of a cultural thing. But, uh, you know, one of the, I was going to say the last thing, one of the other reasons I, I think that men cheat is because when you get into a relationship, uh, the sex comes with uh, little tag-alongs, like earmarks, if you would say. It's like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to have sex right now. We still have to take the kids to, to soccer. I don't want to have sex right now. The trash isn't taken out. Um, I'm looking at our, our kitchen and the cabinets. They look old. Do we have money for new cabinets? We don't. Well, guess who's not getting sex tonight if you don't have money for the cabinets? It's true. And so men can go off and look and find something that's unattached. There's no strings attached. It's no pressure. Kind of like how it used to be when you dated. When you can just pick them up, go out on an easy date, maybe dinner, maybe a movie, hang out, have fun, do your thing physically, and then each person gets to go their own way. Then you get married, and it starts to get attached with all these other. I had it, like you were saying earlier. I had a bad day at work. I, I don't want. I don't feel like doing it right now. And women don't understand that. It's it's again. It's the truth hitting them in the face, and they don't want to hear it. And it, it's again. We're not speaking in code here. This is exactly how it is. We're telling women this is it. I know there's exceptions to the rule, but flat out, this is bottom line. This is what it breaks down to. And this book, I mean, it's from the things you read out of it, it's, it's right on the net. It really hits the nail right on the head. Yeah, these are the things that uh, I don't. I really don't think women can handle. When I tell women, you know what, uh, the nights that uh, you say, let's get together tomorrow night, he calls the next number of the book, 
Now, yeah. you, you tell us, you tell us now, uh, as we're saying this, isn't that the truth? Yeah, yeah. And it's funny that women all want the high-profile guy. It's funny, it's funny, like when the thing happened with Kobe, I was just like, if you were to marry Kobe Bryant, a young, rich, athletic man, that, I mean, all the Lakers could walk out of uh, into a, an airport terminal, and you wouldn't recognize a lot of them, but if you saw Kobe Bryant, you're like, oh, that must be the Lakers. If you're Absol absolutely right. Hey, thanks a lot for the call, Chad. The Tom Likas Show.